So therefore you go forward, apply the brake, compress, jump upwards and bring the bike with you. If at any point during the front hop you feel as though you're going over the front, just release the front brake and the bike will come down. So remember, it's just confidence. You have to have confidence to get the bike to the bounce point. If you overcompensate, front brake just comes off, no problem. Well, Nicky, we're now at the beginning of the Hop Till You Drop contest. The riders now gathering in their boxes. Yes, John, each rider has a six-foot square area outside which they aren't allowed to go. They'll be eliminated if they do. And they're off. They're off, and we've already lost Scott. He's out. That leaves... <laughs> oh, well, Glenn's gone as well. That's six, six left. Six heads. Uh, who's next? Dave Hemmings out, dropping his head in shame. Poor chap. He thought he was going to do so well there. Scott Domit looking extremely comfortable, hardly lifting the bike off the ground. Jez Avery is out as well. That's okay. a real surprise. I expect Jez to do better in this contest. <laughs> Jamie Tatlow picking up lots of air there, really working hard. Well, he did better than perhaps would be expected. <laughs> so which of the last three isn't going to get through to the final? Rob Warner on our right, Jay Hardy on our left. Uh, what, oh, it looks like... Oh, it's he's gone. So that leaves just Scott and Jay... It's actually incredibly tiring to keep going for this long, which is probably why Jay's just died there. And look at Scott. That boy's been practising. <laughs> Easy. He could keep going all day. Put the kettle on. So on the rear wheel, we got it down to two highest finishers. And now for the decider, they jump on their front wheel, front hopping between Scott Dummett and Jay Hardy to decide the winner. So they're up and it's all over already. I can't believe it, it's just... Well, he did say he wasn't particularly brilliant at front hops, but that was a lot quicker than we thought. Scott, then, the undoubted winner, picking up all ten points once again from the hopping contest. Front wheel hops are tricky things and it's easy to get it wrong. Let Jay show you how. Front and rear wheel hopping skills are fun and useful. They are, however, a great way to damage your wheels or hurt yourself. Follow these tips, wear a helmet and take it easy. This way you might save on damaged parts. One of the best skills you can learn for mountain biking is the bunny hop. Give you a far greater flow to your trail riding, you'll never ever have to get off that log again. It's one of the more difficult tricks though, there's so many aspects to it. Most people make the mistake of when they're learning bunny hops, they try and lift the bike against their body weight. You see them doing that. It's no good. You mustn't lift the bike against your weight. You must use your weight to lift the bike. There are two styles of bunny hop. The first is a European bunny hop, which is both wheels being lifted equally together. This is fine, but you'll never gain as much height with this as you will with the American bunny hop. The American bunny hop is a succession of drives and movements which achieve a lot more height. To achieve this, you have to have the right gear first of all. Middle ring, maybe third, fourth on the rear. Move towards the obstacle, pedaling at a sensible speed, maybe 10 miles an hour. Don't pedal right to the obstacle, give yourself at least 8 to 10 feet of free wheeling. When you get about 2 or 3 feet from the obstacle, drive upwards with the front wheel. This levers from the rear axle. This gives you upward motion of the bike already. So there's your first aspect of the American hop. The second aspect is the upward movement of the wheel. You drive up from the fulcrum, which is your rear axle. So therefore, you're levering against your rear wheel upwards. You have your momentum. Now your bike is facing in the upward direction. You have your height. Now you need is a third aspect, upward motion of the rear wheel. You achieve this by pushing forward on your arms and bringing your legs up. As you pull on your legs, it will take the weight off the rear wheel, which means that the pushing of your arms will bring it up. You then tuck the wheel up between your legs, which will retrieve a high and very good American bunny hop. When learning to bunny hop, don't expect too much. Start on something low and never practice over something solid like a log because if you hit it, you're going to come off. The way I first started to learn was with three pieces of cane and two clothes pegs. It's totally variable and if you hit the cane, it just falls off. 
less of me talking about it. Let's see the real pros do it, the Marvel. It was in 1990 that the world bunny hop record was set during a classic Clash of the Titans, Jez, half man, half bunny Avery, and Mark blast off bats. We joined the contest at 33 inches, with all the competition having been eliminated at 27. Remember that the current world record was at this point 37. Jez here clears 36 inches, as does Mark, and the stick is put up to 38, which Jez fails to clear on his first attempt, as does Mark. This is setting a new British record, and there it is, the new British champion, only temporarily, Jez Avery from Team Hot Pies, and Mark Batts failed on his first attempt, but makes it through there to bring both riders at an, a level previously unsurpassed. So the, the hopometer went up to 40 inches. Jez failed. Getting tired at this point. Mark Back comes along. The crowd go absolutely wild. Cannot believe it. That's the new record set. And Jez, a little bit tired, has failed to reach it. But what a contestant. A real crowd pleaser. There you have it. Let's take it once more. Look at that. 40 enormous inches. So high, a man can ride underneath it. If you too want to kiss the clouds, follow these points and you might be inspecting the ozone before you know it. Okay, so you think you're pretty flash, you've learnt a few tricks. Maybe you think about moving into the area of observed trials. There are a few more basic skills you need before you can succeed at this. One of them is the track stand. This is basically standing still on the bike without touching the ground. Move forward on your bike. Try and practice first of all on a slight slope. This will help you balance. Turn into the slope slightly pressuring on the pedal to move forward. The slope will bring you back naturally. This will move you either side of the point of balance. So if you move one way, let the bike roll back. If you tip the other, pressure the pedal and move forward slightly. And you'll just keep your balance by rocking the bike backwards and forwards. A lot of people fall into the trap of using their brakes. The less you use the brake, the better because the rocking motion either side of the point of balance is what keeps you upright. You lock a brake, you can't move, you're going to fall over. Once you've mastered this, you'll stand absolutely still. The next skill you'll need is the hop. This will help you manoeuvre in small tight areas by being able to hop sideways or round. This is achieved by locking both brakes so that you don't roll anywhere. Bend your knees, spring upwards, pull on the bars. The moment you pull upwards on the bars, you pull slightly forward so that the rear comes up as well. If you use cleated pedals or clip pedals, the trick becomes even easier because you can pull the rear with your feet. But if you don't, pull slightly forward on the bars to bring the rear up. If you're in a situation where you've got more forward motion, you don't need to hop in stages to turn the tight space. You can use a front wheel spin front wheel spin is a trick where you turn on the front wheel. To achieve this, one of the great tools is the forward motion. The forward motion will enable you to turn the rear wheel around the front wheel. Roll forward, turn into the turn slightly, apply the front brake, put your weight on your hands, the bike will come round, let the front brake off, Rear wheel comes down and right away.
So to put our contestants through the track stands and trial skills, we have the Daihatsu demonstrator. And the first boy up onto the top, it's Rob Warner. Tightly in control, he's bouncing there gently, he's got his front wheel on, yes, oh no, not quite. That wasn't a dab though, he didn't actually put anything down, he was just resting the bike. He has the bike on the first level, now he's going for the second level, front wheel first. Well done Rob, yes, he's there. He's taking a little bit longer now than he perhaps should do, he's going to get tired and there it is, the first dab. So Rob has one dab on the second level. He's up to the top now. He's got the front wheel up. Now, the, the, the terrible thing about this truck is there is not a lot of room to turn around at the top. So on to Scott Domit now. And Scott is looks like he's taking it from the opposite side. And the front wheel's up. So far, no dabs. Looking very in control. And Scott's quick too, isn't he? He's straight up onto the top. That's right, that's, that's the important thing with this. As soon as you get tired, your concentration starts to go, your legs don't work. You've got to get up there in one quick, smooth movement if you can. And what's Scott up to? He's done a 180 and he wants to come back down again, the difficult way. <laughs> this is actually more than we're asking the boys to do, but Scott just can't resist the challenge. And he's making it look so easy. You've got to remember he's looking over the front wheel, a long way down to the ground. Last manoeuvre, absolutely amazing. Yet another born show off doing his best. So, who's next then? It's Glenn Turner. Easily up onto the first ramp. Malcolm holding the flag out of the way there so it doesn't get into Glenn's face. Poised, He's... balancing, little room for error. It's a big bike. He's not a small man, and there's not a lot of space on that truck. He's, he's nicely up, up onto the next level. Yes, he's onto the second level, up onto the top level now. Front wheel's there. Can he get his back? Yes! Oh, oh I thought Perfect he was going to go score. then, but no. No dabs, nearly lost it because he's crouching there with all his might. Trying to get back down. And he's also going to try and copy Scott. Can he make it? Well, put. Oh, no, he's lost it. Glad One he put dab. his foot down there. He could have but gone only after he fulfilled our dastardly challenge. Jez Avery. Now then, can Jez get up there in a nice, easy movement? <laughs> he's dabbed once, so he's got no chance of getting the full points in this part of the contest. Scoops that front wheel up with a plump. Oh, oh but he's, he's lost, lost it at the front. That's yeah. him out of the yeah. contest. Front wheel over the edge. But well done, Jez. Ah, uh, the crowd's <laughs> favourite, Jamie Madman Tatlow, trying to get straight up onto the <laughs> second pallet. <laughs> trying to ride all the way to the top in a straight line. <laughs> uh, failing. <laughs> and he's down. Well, good try, Jamie. Oh, he's giving it another go. <laughs> Defeated by wooden pallets and a large truck. <laughs> uh, Jay Hardy, now what's Jay? Oh, yeah, I didn't think Jay was going to be conventional uh, this, somehow. This really isn't Jay's forte at all. What is this boy playing at? So, although Scott and Glenn both got to the top, we gave the points to Scott for his stylish descending. Learning to ride well in observed trials takes a lot of practice. It didn't come overnight to any of these boys, and to some of them it still hasn't come. But just watch Dave Wonderly, doesn't he make it look easy? <laughs> practice can make perfect, and here's some tips to help. One of the greatest thrills about mountain biking is to get some big air. But before you get big air, you've got to learn the basics. So let's talk of jumps in terms of maybe a foot. When you approach a ramp, which you've picked maybe two foot high, with a nice sloping back to it, never jump off of anything to start off with that you can't just roll over. Keep your legs slightly bent. Now the art of this is to keep your head because people approach the ramp either too fast and they stiffen. They frighten themselves. Be relaxed. Keep loose. Bend your back slightly. Keep low on the bike. When you come up the ramp, remember to keep those legs slightly bent because straight legs 
won't help you compensate for the back or the front wheel kicking. This is why a lot of people that start jumping have front wheel landings. Bent legs, you won't get any front wheel landings unless you do something very wrong with your body weight. So keep your body weight central on the bike. Arms, slightly bent. If you remember all these aspects, you'll have a smooth, level flight and a slight back wheel landing. The problem most people have is they try and do too much too soon. Remember, when you're doing neutral jumps, three pitfalls occur. One, front wheel landings. Two, steep rear wheel landings. And probably the worst of all, landing with the front wheel crossed. If you're having front wheel landings, shift your weight slightly further back on takeoff. If you're having steep rear wheel landings, extend your arms in flight. And if you're having crossed up landings, it's because your weight is off balance through the air. Now this is usually caused by turning slightly on the ramp. Keep your takeoff smooth and straight. Once you've sussed this and you're comfortable with it, you can move on to getting some really big air. Getting big air is quite a different style on the ramp and that's where big air comes from, not just your speed. On the ramp, you must drive forward. As the bike comes up, you drive your feet through your heels, forward and in. And you pull on your arms in a circular motion to drive the bike up. To compensate for this, driving of the bike which will cause that as you go up you extend your arms forward and bring the bike with your feet up between your legs which will mean that the bike will level out in flight which gives you more air and a hell of a lot more fun this time when we do a jump we're going to put some style into it when you're going to style and cross up You've got to turn on the ramp. Style doesn't just come in the air, it comes on the ramp. So I'm going to go wide and turn back into myself to get myself balanced in the air. So the last contest for our gladiators right, is the jumps. First we'll have one for length and then one for height. So just how far can Scott Robinson go? Well Malcolm Fawcett, our charming representative from Daihatsu Off-Road, will be marking it. As you can see from the side there, Scott was about two feet from the front. And here we go, Scott Domit powering to the ramp. Is it long? It looks like it's going to be longer than the first Scott. So at the moment, oh a good two feet ahead there. Dave hey, Hemming. Mm, didn't look too good to me from the side. Mr. Elegant, but not Mr. Record Breaker. Nah, in between the first two, I think. 
Jez Avery. Twisting the bike, maybe flicking it, thinking it'll make it go further. He got and a lot of height there, like? but he didn't really get the length, did he, Nicky? Jamie Tallow, twisting the wheel in the air, but he hasn't beaten Scott Domit. I'm Domitz. glad he brought that wheel back Long round again before he so landed. Far. Here we go, Jay Hardy. Uh, not very high. No, not high at all, it didn't look it. Oh, oh but look the at the length. travel. Oh, I think he might have taken Fantastic. the lead there. Fantastic, into the next county. <laughs> Rob Warner also flicking the bike in the air. How's that looking? Well, it's high, but I think he dropped the back wheel a bit early. And it's Flying Jay Hardy, Golden Kangaroo Award to him. Now, Scott Robinson, he's going for height this time, not for length. We'll be able to see how high they got by looking at the pole and the line that we draw next to it. That is the highest point that Scott got. Scott Domit. Now, Scott's shown very classy up until now. Can he... Lifts the back oh, wheel for... Oh, grief. wow! It's Apollo Almost 26, Scott Domit. the top of the Daihatsu. And how high can Pee Wee Hemming heave it? <laughs> Dave, obviously not anywhere close to Scott's jump. They took Scott's trampoline away, the swine. Jez Avery now, how can he do? Well, Up against the cab. It's above oh, the door. Oh, it's big, yes, but it's high. not as big as Scott. That must take him into second quite safely, though. Jamie, got to twist that wheel again. Yeah, Does I Jamie think, really know what he's doing? I think Jamie's <laughs> more concerned in some style points and not wrecking his bike. <laughs> Jay Hardy. How can he do on the height then? Oh, no. He, the back wheel was up really good, but yeah, the front, the front wheel lost a bit. And Rob Warner, our final jumper. With a slightly sad attempt. <laughs> so that leaves Scott, the overall winner of the jumps, with Jay in second. And it's Scott's fourth victory, which makes him a clear winner of the challenge and proves he is totally, totally wild. wild. As shown at the recent World Championships, the better riders were able to control the bumps by actually pre-jumping them, whereas the lesser riders were at the whim of the terrain, getting kicked as they went over, having to hang on for dear life. So if you want to stay on your bike, be in control. Jumping will give you a thrill, but can turn your bike into a nervous wreck. Remember that not even the strongest forks and frames are designed or guaranteed for stunts like these. And here are a few pointers to help. Well, I've personally never had any trouble jumping a bicycle. It's landing it that's the problem, and this is why a ramp was set up at the Malvern Hills last year, so that the riders didn't have to land them, they just went swimming. This really is no way to treat your bicycle, though. on two wheels but no one is immortal oh I can hardly bear to watch even the best riders hurt themselves when they take themselves beyond their limits but as long as you know yours you wear the right safety gear then your mountain bike will be your best friend forever well at the end of a thoroughly crazy day surrounded by all these morons I'm going to take a trip home and hopefully none of them will see me go
fever's holding you Oh, we can get down on that groove We're moving close Hips working over time Getting fast, so fast We just don't want to, we don't want to Stop! <laughs> oh, strawberries and cream <laughs>